Welcome back guys. We have a lot more progress we need to make on this cargo e-bike build. I'm going to tackle the front end and hopefully most of the fabrication in this episode. So what is left to be done as far as the fabrication goes? I wanted to clean up this front end. That's why you see me chopping it up like this. It was a little too square looking. I wanted a more streamlined look and give it just a better or more interesting appearance. I still need to figure out how I'm going to support the front of this, although I do have a pretty good idea and that is also going to help me with some brake mounting, which I will show you very soon. Unfortunately, these little pieces that I cut off of the front to make it look a little bit more streamlined and tapered aren't long enough to span the gap that I just made, so I'm going to have to get a little creative, maybe cut some little pieces together and then form a longer route that I can weld to the front right there. This this change is completely cosmetic because it doesn't really have any effect on the bin or anything other than it just looks quite different but this small change does actually make quite a big difference in how it looks. It was just looking a little too boxy. I wanted the front to be a little more integrated into how the rest of the bike was flowing and kind of looking so I just wanted to change it and I'm glad that I did. This part is by far the absolute worst part of this entire project and that's just clean cleaning off all the paint so that I can weld to it. Here you'll see me cut the tapers for these are the uprights that I'm going to be using as supports for the front rack. Trimming these off in this way is not purely cosmetic because they do serve the purpose of getting out of the way of some of the other things that are around the front hub. And even though I am complaining about having to do all the work of taking off the paint before I weld to it, I am pretty grateful that I came upon this shopping cart to utilize some of its parts because I think it has a pretty cool aesthetic or at least something that's different. Here is a small collection of smaller parts that I'm going to weld together to bridge the gap on that part that I had just cut off on the front rack. And of course they're not finished until I strip all the paint off of them which is going to make welding these tiny little pieces a lot easier. Now I could just have the bottom rack and that would be totally fine. It would support the bin and everything would be great. Although if I do want to put something on here that isn't the bin, say I wanted to rest a backpack, it's going to be a lot better to have have some support on the vertical span, the vertical distance, as opposed to only having it on the horizontal. This is also going to help in supporting the fore and aft movement of stopping and going, so you could mount and strap something. Say you wanted to move something a lot larger that was maybe wider than the bike itself, you could strap it not only to the bottom but also behind it and that would give it more support. The way I'm thinking of attaching it is this bike came with that clamp that you see there. I don't know what that was for it could have been a phone mount or something some sort of mount to the handlebars but it didn't have anything else attached to it so I'm just gonna utilize it. I was messing with a few different pieces of scrap metal that I had laying around as for mounting that vertical grid to that mount that came with the bike and I think I want to go with some square tubing to me it just looks a little bit more finished than all the other plates that I was trying out. Now that I have a pretty good idea of how I want everything to line up and be assembled I can make all of this a lot more permanent by taking it to the welding table. But before I weld everything up on the front end, I figured it might be smarter to maybe put some holes in the pieces before I weld them all together because it's going to be a lot easier when I can just throw it in the vise and then drill these holes out. I try my best to do things like this where if I can anticipate something being easier in a different sequence then I will go ahead and do that but I don't always do that as it's very hard to keep 
all of these things in my mind of spanning multiple pro I'm doing lots of projects at the same time and also I have other things aside from these projects and making these videos going on in my life that I also need to be paying attention to and trying to stay on top of. Now I told you guys what I was going to do previously which is weld everything together but allow me to go on a bit of a tangent about planning and trying to foresee future things becoming a problem as this right here is an example of that where if I had just welded this up and not drilled the holes or mounted it yet I might have lined these up so that I didn't have access to these screws anymore which would have definitely been a problem although not impossible to get off I'm sure I could have used vice grips or something to turn the screw heads but it definitely would be a lot simpler if I could just get a wrench in there and actually have access to them with that being said you cannot plan for everything even the best laid plan that take forever and you think you've thought of everything you'll make some dumb mistake and trust me I've seen experts do it all the time they just plan everything to like an insane degree and then they still make one stupid mistake that you know somebody who is not an expert would go well why would you do that Anyway, the moral of the story is plan for the best but expect the worst because it's probably going to be somewhere in between the welding did come out pretty good, although they're not as straight nor symmetrical as I would like, but I will be going over them with another pass of welding as well as some more cleanup with the angle grinder. You know, I couldn't stop at just adding front disc brakes to a bike that never had them before. I had to go ahead and put them on the rear as well, and they're more difficult because, yeah, the rear disc brake, it did not want to clear the frame, so... Here's my attempt at trying to squish down an aluminum frame and aluminum is a lot stronger than I thought it was going to be. I thought I could squeeze this tube pretty easily but no it, it put up quite a fight and the way I finally remedied this I only needed to move it like a slight amount. I was just going to try to put like a small dent in it and what ended up happening to actually fix it and clear it was laying it down on its side getting an old railroad spike and then just hammering into making it dented. I eventually did get it to clear and that is all well and good now so I'm just removing the old brake because I don't really need that stuff on there anymore. So we have more problems with the rear brake. First the di well that's a problem obviously but that that one wasn't my fault this one was my fault where i thought i had everything positioned correctly on my mount and it turns out i was just slightly off to one side so i needed to move my mount and that required a lot of my patients trying to just cut this thing off it's in a very awkward position to try and get it and it was bothering me i was trying to be pretty delicate because all i really needed to do was move that nut over about two millimeters i was very close to having it first try perfect with all of my positioning but it was just slightly out of range so that the disc was scraping on the caliper even when i moved the adjustment way over to one side in hindsight i should have just blasted this thing right off with the angle grinder but i was trying to be delicate even though i'm hitting it with a hammer right now anyway i eventually got it by just hitting it a few more times with the dremel and then it came undone and then i could move it although at that point the nut was so welded and blown apart that i just needed to put a new one on there anyway I may be a noob welder and my welds may not be the prettiest, but I will say they hold on. They definitely hold on well enough. After that, just got to clean it up and then hopefully put the new nut in the right spot. And I'm definitely going to be a little more scrutinizing of exactly where that is. Because the thing I don't like about disc brakes is that there is a very small margin, a very small bandwidth between what will work and what will not. Okay, how many of you guys know that this is not going to work before I even attempt it? I don't know why I thought I could just drill a nice little hole right in there, but yeah, that, no, 
It'll work backwards, but not forward. I'm trying to just make some holes so I can mount the front caliper to grab onto the front disc, but yeah, I used the wrong tool and even still I made it work, but I went back later with the correct tool, which is this, and then made it so that screw fits a lot better. And I was thinking while I was doing this that Yes, the screw does hold it, but I want something a little bit more substantial for the front brake. Now that I have the holes for the front brake, I can essentially just reinforce them with those two little plates right there. And you guys already saw the rear brake kind of on the bike, but this was footage before I put it on. These are pieces to add bracing and the mounts for the rear brake. Of course, I didn't strip all the paint off of all the parts. So what happens is that part gets very hot, even though the paint is kind of far away and it lights on fire, which is pretty cool cool to look at. Here's essentially how I did the positioning. I just left the brake on there, try to tack things in place without them moving too much, and then hope for the best that everything lines up after I welded it. Here is the front brake all welded up, and it is very sturdy, very strong, and I'm happy with how it came out. The front was much easier to weld to just because I didn't have a lot of other things in the way, like the frame, as far as the rear brake went. But even still, I did have an issue with the front brake because even though I got out all the positioning correct before I welded it, when I welded it, things shifted on me. Which does happen when you dump a bunch of heat into a metal part. It just starts moving on its own. And this started going to where you can see how it's aligned, but now the caliper is actually tilted in one direction and I need them to be perfectly parallel. So how did I fix this problem? Exactly in the way that I created it in the first place. And that is I just heated it up with a blowtorch and then slightly bent it just enough so that it was much more parallel with the other side of the mount. And so then the disc brake wanted to sit just right in between the calipers. After that slight little adjustment, everything was running very smoothly for the front brakes. Here you can see it in action and it works very well almost like it was made to be that way. In one of my previous episodes, I did have a guy leave a comment saying, hey, they make like brake adapters. You can just buy one for 10 bucks and it'll clip on your frame and put the brake right there. So that is one viable option if you guys want to add disc brakes to a bike that never had them. But I was glad I did it my way because it's much stronger or at least it appears that way than the ones that you can buy for like 10 bucks bucks although I probably will do that in the future just try just to try it out let you guys know if it's actually a viable option you guys saw me cutting some pieces for a custom controller mount that's one of the perks of doing a DIY build for an e-bike is you can put your components basically exactly where you want them if you notice all the wires are going directly into the battery box container which is gonna look very clean and super nice I know this piece of metal for the mount is very flimsy but it doesn't have to be super supportive because that controller weighs almost nothing and I can always just add reinforcement later which I actually do. This frame afforded me a lot of options to where I could put this controller. I could even fit it inside the battery box and that would be super clean as well. I do have some future proofing plans for the battery box but I'll get into that in the next episode. Do you guys want to see a super clean Rivna install? What the? That's not supposed to happen. It turns out I actually broke my Rivnut tool, but then I took it apart for 45 minutes and figured out what was wrong and then I fixed it. So there it is working again. So now I can freely remove and install this controller over and over again without having any issues with the threads. Although I do have a seat that is going to be in the way if I have to remove it. And I don't even know if I got into, but those holes right there are the seat brackets because I'm going to be making my own seat for this build. So here's where we're at at this stage of the build. I have two rear supports going down. Those are new. I also fully welded out this front rack and that's working
working very well and looking pretty cool. I also have two working disc brakes on a bike that never had them before. Honestly, for the most part, I think all of the major fabrication, maybe even all of the fabrication at this point of the build is pretty much done. And this is a relief because a lot of subtle engineering went into all this stuff. I got a really cool controller mount, which is gonna look real clean with all the wiring. I got my seat post mounts so that I can make a seat now and stick that on there. Here's a better shot of the rear disc mounting setup and no it is not fully welded out. I still have a lot more welding to do on this frame but all the pieces are in the right place and I probably won't do a lot of footage of that. I'll do it off camera but I will be fully welding out everything so that it is very sturdy. Functionally it's pretty much done. I'm saving the shots with all the bins and racks on it for later for the final reveal and now we have a lot Aside from the seat, we have a lot of aesthetic things to work on because I was just going to leave it like this and then my mind got the best of me. So stay tuned for that. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.